I want to talk to you about DP, dynamic programming. So I was always afraid of dynamic program problems. I don't think I ever understood how to do them. They're always super scary. Always seems so impossible for me to do. But then I started to just try to learn all the different patterns for dynamic programming. And one of the first patterns I ever learned was take it or leave it or some people call it knapsack, some people call it coin change, whatever you call it, I like to call it take it or leave it. And I'm gonna show you how I do take it or leave it DP problems right now. And we're gonna do it on this problem called house robbers, one of the very first problems I ever did it on. You are a professional robber planning to rob houses along a street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed. The only constraint from stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security systems connected and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. Given an integer array nums representing the amount of money of each house, return the maximum amount of money you can rob tonight without alerting the police. That's the problem, house robbers. So we have to rob these houses. We can't rob two houses in a row, otherwise, a police will get contacted so how do you know which houses to rob so what is take it or leave it DP it's basically at every single index you have a choice to make you can either take it or you can leave it I'm just gonna solve it real quick so basically we're gonna just try and rob every single house and if we if we rob one house that means we can't rob the next house and we gotta skip to the next next house. I'll show you what I mean. When I did my DP problems, I do them all like top down. I was never able to get bottom up DP for most problems. So like I usually try and stick with top down DP. And when I first started doing top down DP, you know, it's like top down means kind of like you start with the brute force recursion and then you add a cache on it. So then it becomes a lot more faster or more efficient. And I used to start with like a helper function like this. Vector int blah, 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 pass down my parameters and I'll pass down like an index i and then I like have my cache. But we'll talk about the cache later. I don't really use helper functions like this anymore. We'll talk about that later also. So this is my helper function. It's basically a recursive function that's going to check every index and we're gonna do two things at every index. We're going to rob that house and we're going to not rob that house. Those are the only two things we're going to do. So if, all right, this is how, this is like, I guess the base case or whatever people like to call it. If we reach the end of the array, like if we go out of bounds, basically that means there are no more houses to rob and we can just return zero and it will terminate the recursion. So we just got to do two things. We either rob the house or we don't rob the house when we rob the house what does that mean that means we're going to take all the money in that house and we're going to add it to whatever uh the recursion returns after we skip the next house so when we rob the house it means we can't rob the next house so we got to skip it so our index instead of becoming i plus one to go to the next house we'll skip the next house and we'll go to i plus two and if we don't rob the house that means we don't add any money from the current house and we just go to I plus one, which is the next house in line. So like we're skipping this house. And that's that's like basically it for take it or leave it. At every index, you have two choices and you decide which one is the better choice by returning the max of the two things, rob or don't rob. Right now, there's no cache for this function, so it's gonna time out, but We'll go ahead and run it anyways. So we'll just like return DP nums and we start at index zero, which is the first house. So this should give a correct answer, but it's gonna be too slow. So here we get the accepts and it should give a TLE. Time limit exceeded. Takes too long. Algorithm ain't efficient enough. Look at that. So this is where the DP thing comes into play, where you give it a cache, like you cache the results for similar problems and then we're gonna reuse that cache. So let's build our cache. 
how do you know like what how to make the states for the cash i don't know man it takes years for you to get that intuition but just keep practicing dp problems our cash size is going to be n plus one i do plus one for good luck because sometimes it might be out of bounds or something so it's always nice to just do plus one and then we set the initial value to negative one that way we can know if we've seen the cash or not and we use negative one because we can't go robbing houses and end up with less money than we started with. We can only get more money. So if we see a negative one, that usually signals that we have not seen this setup. We had to pipe down this cash like that. And then vector int cash. And then we check the cash. We're like, if the cash is not negative one, that means we've seen this sub problem and we should just return the answer that we've cached and then otherwise down here instead of just returning it we're gonna return it and set the cache equal to the value that the best value for that index and uh let's see if that works no it doesn't work because i forgot to pass that down all right let's see if this works <laughs> Hopefully it works. All right, that was easy work. So this is how I started out learning DP. I think this was one of the first DP patterns that I learned for sure. And this is basically how I used to implement it with a helper function. But these days, I don't really use helper functions that much. I use lambdas instead because it's a lot easier to not have to pipe down stuff to the helper function by reference. It's like a bunch of typing. So you can like make a lambda like this. And then the trick here is you gotta, you gotta pass in the lambda function to itself. And that's it. That's the only thing we gotta pass because we already have the cache access right there. And I can just copy all of this junk in here, erase that helper, put this junk back in, and it should work, man, right? Let me get rid of some of these extra spaces. Let's see. I'm about to hit run. Come on, man. Oh yeah, I forgot to change this call right here. Jesus Christ, what did I do wrong, man? Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta send these down here too. And then we, we can clean this up because there isn't that many parameters we send. We're only sending the index. So we can get rid of these, we can get rid of that. And then we can get rid of these and we can get rid of that. And that's it, hopefully, let's see. And there you go. That is introduction to take it or leave it, AKA house robber, AKA coin change, AKA knapsack. So that's like the most basic version of knapsack where you just have two paths to take and you go down both paths and then you just return the best. Sometimes it might be minimum, sometimes it's maximum. That's how it goes.